question of if she can put those double axles together, Tracy Wayman, if she can put those in this uh, compulsory program, because she's in second place. It's a question of whether she'll be able to catch Kate Thompson or how close she'll come to Kate Thompson. But she has to put the big ones in. Well, Johnny, admittedly, Tracy has been having some problems with those double axles. But in my opinion, at this stage of the game, what it comes down to is confidence and conviction and determination. I've seen Tracy land that jump perfectly many a time. And I think that if she's got the confidence and determination tonight, that she'll do it. Well, here it comes. Let's watch for it. That's really unfortunate because I think she really went for it that time. Just didn't quite have a good feeling in the landing and just let it go. million dollar smile even though she knows there's going to be deduction back there putting it together with her big spins impression that she's being overly cautious now? I feel that, yeah, I think that the fall in the double axle really upset her, and I think she lost the feeling for the whole program. Well, she was having problems with that jump and warm-up before she skated. Let's have another look at that double axle. She had to put it in. It is a required element. Let's watch her go up here, Brian. She seems to be okay on the takeoff, and in the air, she seems to be straight. Something happens on the landing. Well, I think that she could have pulled out of that with a lot of strength, but I just think that it wasn't there tonight. The combination, however, double lutz, double toe loop was fine. Well, it's unfortunate for such a gutsy young lady to have to miss that one element, and that's going to hurt her quite a bit. Don't forget, though, that this short program accounts for only 20% of the total mark. The free skating program, which we'll be seeing later on in the weekend, is 50%, so anything can still happen. As we watch Tracy in her combination spin, they have to change positions or feet at least twice, and Tracy is doing it beautifully in this required element. I want to remind everybody, Saturday afternoon, the junior men free, the junior free dance, and the junior ladies free. Here's Coach Doug Lee with Tracy putting on that very brave smile, waiting for those marks to come out for the required elements, the one that's going to hurt. Then uh, Saturday night, we have the senior men short program, the senior pair short, senior ladies free skating final. And then Sunday afternoon for 90 minutes, starting at 4.30, the senior dance, senior pair, and the senior men's free. And here are the marks, uh, four, five, four, nine, four, five, four, seven, two, four, five, so four, seven. And how long has it been since you've seen Tracy take a four, three? Well, John, it's that, uh, as we saw earlier in the program, the fact that she grew up so quickly, she's still not quite used to the height difference. And But I think she will get it with time. She's a very strong girl. She's a very strong-willed girl. She did three, what she felt were three perfect figures yesterday, and cried coming off the ice, feeling she hadn't done well enough. Now for presentation, five, 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 three, five, two, a five, one, five, six, Five three and a five one for Tracy Wayneman. Canadian champion Kate Thompson from Toronto Granite, who also ranked eighth in the world, skated brilliantly to hold on to first place at the halfway mark of the ladies' competition. Charlene Wong moved up beautifully from fifth to second, followed by Tracy Wayneman in third, Elizabeth Manley fourth. Kerry Smith and Andrea Hall in the fifth place tie, followed by Lana Sherman, Cynthia Kuhl, Diane Mayajabowski dropping down to ninth, Anissa Gurchin in tenth, Patricia Schmidt 11th, and France Montez in 12th place.
the Canadian Figure Skating Championships will continue.